I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises. Not mine, but his praises. Not yours, but his praises. Not the world, but his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I will make a boast of the Lord. I will declare his goodness. His mercy is forever. If you feel like me, you want to get on your feet and give God some praise. You want to put your hands together and talk about the goodness of the Lord. God has been faithful. 15 months of faithfulness. Morning by morning, he's been new with his mercies. And we bless his name today. Good morning. Good morning to the New Calvary family, those of you who are with us in person, those of you who are viewing us on Facebook and later on on YouTube, and then good morning also to our Facebook congregation. You don't belong to New Calvary, but we claim you. You, you haven't gone through what we've been through, but it's all right. You can walk alongside of us because that's how good God is. Well, I greet you in the marvelous, the miraculous, the majestic, the messianic name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Oh, I bless his name every chance I get because he's been good to me. What about you? He's been faithful to me. How about you? Well, we come to praise God today. We got a praise team that's ready to worship him in spirit as well as in truth. I want to say this up front. I want to thank the men of New Calvary. There are no men in the church kingdom like the men at the New Calvary Baptist Church. They were here last night. They were here yesterday afternoon, and I believe they were here early this morning making sure that this tent was in place, the chairs were set up, the sound system was working, and I thank God for faithfulness. Amen. So I say good morning to everybody. If you don't know, I'm Pastor Vincent Oliver. I am the honored pastor. I didn't do any honoring, but God honored me to be the pastor of the New Calvary Baptist Church. And I thank God for the privilege to serve. Come on, get on your feet. Praise team going to bless us with some music. They're going to get this thing started right. Are you with them? Oh, come on, come on, come on. Somebody say, I'm ready to have church. I'm ready to have church. I'm ready. Yeah, I know you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time? I don't know about you, but it had not been for the Lord on my side. I would have lost my mind a long time ago, but God in his infinite wisdom said not so. And he decided to wake me up this morning, so I came into the place of praise. I came into the place to bless his name. I came into the place to get into the presence of God, because I need him more today than I ever needed him before. Amen?
everybody else's sleep. God told me to tell you I'm turning your situation around. Do I have any company in this place? Most of us drive in, but God, we believe that we don't belong here, and we are here. God, we ask you to remember our pastor, our first lady. As he leads us down the path of righteousness, God, go with him. Continue to fill him up with directions from you that he can share with us. God, again, we say we thank you. We praise your name. God, we just give you all glory, all praise, all honor, God. And it's in the name of Jesus. Y'all know our theme song. Let's sing our song. There's no such thing as an ungrateful Christian. Every child of God knows how to say thank you. It's not just with your mouth, but you say it with your heart.
who is just. You know, there are some things that he could have held us accountable for, yeah, yeah. but he let us slide. Yeah. That's called grace. Yeah. Amen. There's some things that he could have he could have allowed to happen to us, but he sent it another way. That's called mercy. Yeah. We just stop to say thank you to the Lord for all that he does, all that he is doing that he shall do in the days to come. Are you grateful? Yeah. Amen. Somebody at home, I heard you say, I'm grateful. Yeah. You're not here, but you're still grateful. Because you can get a worship service in. Where would we be had it not been for Facebook and Zoom and YouTube and all of those things that kept us connected to the household of faith? So I'm grateful for how the Lord allowed us uh, to become familiar with this medium and how to use it to our advantage and then to be a blessing and a source of encouragement and inspiration uh, to the people of God. But I have good news. We, we are on our way to in-person worship. Amen. Starting on next Sunday morning. Amen. Lord willing, we're going to go into the sanctuary and we're going to have church like we did some 15 months ago. We thank God for the privilege and we're going to do it with the spirit of excitement. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm excited. I'm supposed to go on vacation, but I can't go on vacation and let y'all have all the fun. Oh, no. Amen. I'm going to be right there because I think God uh, wants to hear from us. Uh, those of you who have been home, God wants to hear from you. Amen. Those of you who have been visiting with us on Facebook but not a member, this is your opportunity to come and to be in the service of the Lord. We want to get to know who you are. We want to meet you. We want to invite you into our fellowship. And we will be doing all of that on next Sunday. Can I give some specific instructions for uh, our um, return and uh, in-person service on next first Sunday? Because it is a first Sunday, we're going to be in our first Sunday communion attire. Uh, deacons, deaconesses, y'all hear me? Mothers and missionaries and members I need you to know that uh, we're going to put on our church finest for First Sunday because we're going to celebrate communion in the sanctuary together. Amen. I want you to pay close attention to the instructions uh, that you will be given in terms of proper social distancing. Uh, don't forget to bring your mask. I know you may have had both of the vaccines, but still bring your mask, wear your mask, when you feel it is appropriate to do so. There may be those of you who have not had your vaccine as of yet. I can't tell you not to come, but you ought to make sure that you have your mask on. Would you please work with us on that? You know, somebody told me that, that the pandemic is still alive because it's running rampant in people who have not been vaccinated. Bad pastor. Amen. So uh, it's just food for thought. Uh, you have to follow your own mind and follow your own leading. I can't tell you what to do, uh, but I, I know what the statistics are saying. I also know that uh, there is a, a new virus. There is a Delta variant uh, that is running rampant. It's on the loose, and, they, and time will tell, but it seems to be worse than the one we just came out of. So I'm going to keep on wearing my mask. Everywhere I go, people walk around, no mask. I'm going to keep my mask on. Uh, I'm going to try to exercise good discipline and do all of that. I say all of that because uh, on next Sunday, we will still be exercising caution and discipline for health-related re related reasons. Uh, so, so do your very best that you can uh, help the cause of everybody staying healthy and well. Would you do that? Also know this, know that on next Sunday when we are in worship, uh, we have repairs going
going on downstairs in the lower level. Uh, so you may not be able to use the restroom facilities in the sanctuary, but we have restroom uh, facilities available in the church house right next door. So we will make sure that those facilities are in order and presentable so that you can be uh, comfortable and take care of all of your needs. So we thank God for all who are working to make sure that the church is back where it needs to be. It may not be totally like I want it by the first Sunday in August, but we're moving in that direction. I know that, that I talked to y'all on our, at our Zoom church meeting, so you know some of the things that we're expecting to see to happen by the first Sunday. If they don't happen, that don't mean it won't happen. Do somebody hear me? Amen. So we're going to do that. Now, uh, after communion service, uh, and then we go into the rest of the month of August, we will be inside, in person, but it will be informal. Did y'all hear me? because it's the summer. We want, we want to beat the heat, all right? We want to relax and have church and do what we come to do. Okay, I said enough of that. Uh, if anybody ready to give? Anybody got money just burning a hole in your pocket, burning a hole in your purse? I see the smoke coming out of some of those purses. Y'all just want to give that money to God. Amen. Would you get your offering in your hand? If you have a check, if you have cash, if you do it by cash app or give the fly, would you get your device, get your money, get your check, put it in your hand so that I can pray over your offering. I got mine, it's in my Bible, uh, but I'm going to pray over mine as well as yours. The work of the church only goes forward uh, in, in uh, com relation to your generosity and your faithfulness. You know, somebody's walking around with some money that they can really uh, afford to give to the work of the kingdom. If that's you, then God bless you in your generous giving. The rest of us, we have to do what we are duty bound to do and we're going to pay our tithes and pay our offerings and trust God for the overflow. Anybody know what overflow is? Anybody ever feel the effect or walk through the experience of overflow in your life, in your pocketbook? No, I ain't saying nothing about no wallets. In the pocketbook. You know, you got to go down south. You know, they, they still call it pocketbooks down south. Y'all think it's a purse. It's a pocketbook. That's, that's where the blessing is. Would you, would you get your uh, offering in your hand? so that we can pray. That goes for you who are at home as well. Some of you at home, you're going to listen to the benedictions and then come over to the church house and, and make sure that your tithes get to the proper place. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, I come on behalf of these, your good stewards. They are tithers. They are givers. They give cheerfully and they give willingly to the cause of Christ. The work of the kingdom here at New Calvary continues because of the people for whom I pray. I pray for offerings that are being prepared to be given and entrusted to the hands of these your trustees. Take every gift, large and small, and use it for your glory. Take everything that belongs to you and allow it to get to the right place. It's because of faithful givers that we're able to do some of the things that we are accomplishing as a church. So we say thank you. Thank you. But we thank you, Lord, for the increase and we thank you especially for the overflow. There's some people who could use an overflow. They've been, they've been operating on E far too long. Bless them with overflow. Have your way, Father. And then use these gifts through the wisdom and the skill of these trustees and leaders of this church that you may get full glory. And we'll thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. 
and amen. Thank God for that. We're going to move forward with the service. I'm calling on the praise team. Would you come? Those of you who are interested, you can go to our Facebook page, www.newcalvarybe.org, and get more information about what's going on at the church. Find out how you can be a member. Find out how you can do things uh, that would um, support your interest in serving the Lord here at this branch of Zion. So with that having been said, I want to wish happy birthdays to uh, Deacon Adrian Pressy, uh, Brother Mike Pritchett, uh, Minister Bernadette Cornegay, and I know that there are some others. Uh, and we'll get you, we'll get you when we can. God bless you. There are those who will be, if you're interested, the uh, Interdenominational Ministers Action Council will be having a service of installation on this evening at 6 p.m. at the New Destiny Fellowship Church. I believe the address is 906 East 16th Street. Uh, you might want to come so you can see how they put me out to pasture. You might want to come uh, because I know uh, they want to uh, say thank you to me, but we also want to meet all of the new officers of IMAC. So I'm inviting you to come if you don't have anything else to do, and we'll have a great time uh, in the continued service of the Lord. That's because we get ready to do a whole lot right now. Come on, praise team, where you at? Praise team is coming. They're going to sing. God willing, I'm going to preach.
speaks to me when I remind myself that there's some things that I did to myself that only God could get straight. I'm not by myself, I know. But the song says you hmm, give him credit. You have rescued my life. Not, not my situation or my circumstance, but my life. In other words, I made a mess, but not only did you bring me out of it, but you brightened my future. You, you, put, you put a legacy in front of me. You know, a, 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 an advanced legacy is called destiny. We all have legacy, but the question is, are you going to live up to your legacy? Are you going to fulfill the destiny that God has for each one of us. I see Brother Boone. That's what I'm talking about. I see I see Brother Boone. I see some DuPonts. That's because Tate Trey not nowhere preaching. Trey, Trey DuPont's not in town. 
So I see, I see Dupont members. Uh, yeah, I see a lot of faces that I've been missing, and I, I'm so happy uh, to see each one of you uh, in the house of the Lord. Amen. Y'all know what Pastor Paul is just like he said. The word of God can never be overstated, so I want to once again take us to our text, which is really not the operating foundational text of this sermon as much as it is the topical text. That's for the that's for the clergy persons. Y'all y'all still with me on that? That wasn't me. That wasn't me, was it? Okay. Thank you. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 9, verse 16 through verse 20. These are some very sobering words from the psalmist. Psalm 9, verse 16. judgment which he executes. In other words, there's only only some judgment that, that we can do, but the Lord is known by that which only he can do. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God, that might be this nation. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord. Let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in your sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men, that they may know that they are nothing more than mere men. You may be seated. This is the word of the Lord. Would you join me in this prayer of preparation? Father, speak now. First to your vessel, then to your people, that the world may hear. I, I believe and I declare that this message will go well beyond this tent and within the range of our speakers. It will go well beyond this broadcast and into the uttermost parts of the world. I don't know, but I know that you're able. Let me say a word of warning to your people today. Give me freedom to preach and declare your unadulterated word. Unadulterated because it remains pure. Unadulterated because it is original from your mouth. I will give you praise. And then, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of your heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. Shall we all say amen? Amen. And amen. 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 Well, somehow you hit the jackpot because the subject today is hell. Of all the Sundays, for you to come to church or tune in, I want to talk about hell. The subject of hell is not a very popular topic for preaching. The fact is many preachers have all but removed it from their list of preaching and teaching messages. But you know what? As I was researching this message, 
I realize that many of the contemporary translations of the Bible have replaced the word hell with phrases like the place of the dead or the underworld. That is because man shies back away from the frontward reality of the fact and the reality of hell. Both man and woman fear this, this topic. But no matter how silent the pulpits may continue to be, no matter how many different Bible translations skirt around and duck around the word hell. My assignment today is to remind you that hell is a real place. My assignment is to remind you that people are still dying and going to that place called hell. And as a preacher, I have decided that along with my preaching subjects such as heaven and miracles and forgiveness and hope and, and salvation and so many other subjects that you love to hear me preach, the subject of hell must continue to be on my list of preaching topics. A careful study of the Gospels will reveal that Jesus preached and taught more about hell than he did about heaven. That should tell you something. All right. Why would I stand here Sunday after Sunday and talk about the human problems that we all witness and experience? Problems of racism and murder and violence and injustice and not talk about the eternal consequences of those sins. There is a judgment to come for all sin. And God has reserved judgment and punishment for all sinners in a place called hell. So you may as well get comfortable. If you have to, get to the side so you can slide on out. But the fact of the matter is, uh, the doctrine of hell is uncomfortable for most of us to hear. However, it is key to our understanding of God's holiness and man's wickedness. I'm preaching already. If we don't accept the reality of hell, we will never fully understand the message of the gospel. Mm -mm. Hell is another world. Let me tell you why I say hell is another world. Because a lot of people say you go down into the earth, into hell. There, there are people who have made false claims that they went far enough and put a recording and heard the screams of people down in the earth in hell, but there is no hell in the earth. If that were true, then what are you going to do when God destroys this earth? Hell will remain. So hell is another world. It is a place of punishment. It is a place of suffering for every unsaved sinner. So I need to talk to you this morning. And if you're like most folk, you really don't want to be bothered with this sermon. You don't know that much about hell. But what you do know is that you don't want to go there. I thought I was going to get an amen. So let me talk to you. More importantly, let me help you to avoid the fires of hell. So my subject is beat the heat. I, I, I want to talk about the place, the pains, the people, and the prevention associated with this place called hell. Let's beat the heat. First of all, hell is a literal place. Seventy times in the scriptures, especially in the gospels, Jesus warns us about a literal place, a, an actual place called hell. In Luke chapter 16, verse 26, Jesus describes it as a great chasm over which none may cross from there back to us. 
In Matthew 25, verse 32, Jesus tells us of a time when people will be separated into two groups, one entering into his presence and the other group banished into eternal fire. In Luke chapter 16, verse 23, he says, it is a place of eternal torment. In Mark chapter 9, All verse right. 43, he calls hell a place of unquenchable fire. In Mark uh, chapter 9, verse 48, he calls it a place where the worm, you know everybody's going to have sin words when you die, right? Uh, a place where the worm does not die. In Matthew uh, chapter 13, verse 45, uh, Jesus said it will be a place where people will gnash their teeth and anguish and regret. And according to Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31, it will be a place from which there is no return even to warn your loved ones about this place called hell. So, so not only is this a actual place, a literal place, but hell is a large place. All right. Isaiah 5, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 14 tells us that hell has enlarged itself and opened its mouth beyond measure. That means it's, it's growing every day. Someone has done the intricate calculation that 83 people per second die with Christ. With Christ. That's 6,000 people per second. With Christ. You may think that's a large number, but 144,000 people die every day without Christ. That tells me that hell is large, and it's getting larger every day. But you don't want to increase it with your presence. Hell is not only a, a literal place, a large place, but it is a lasting place. An unknown author wrote these sobering words about hell. He said, if a little bird that could not die was moving one tiny, tiny grain of sand from the ocean, once every thousand years, when all of the sand was completely gone, hell would still exist. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41 says this, then he will also say to those on his left hand, depart from me, you cursed, even into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So, so you want to figure out this morning how to beat the heat. All right. Because hell is literal, it's large, and it's lasting. But secondly, hell is a place of pain. Uh, uh, these are the words of Revelation uh, chapter 14, verse 11. And the smoke of their torment, that's the people in hell, shall ascend up forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night. For we know that people endure terrible sufferings right now on this earth. But that is nothing compared to the uninterrupted sufferings of hell. Y'all remember the story about the rich man in Luke chapter 16? The rich man uh, in, in Jesus' parable in chapter 16, he said, I am tormented in this flame. Listen to the descriptions of hell. It's a, it's a furnace of fire. It's a lake of fire. It is described as outer darkness. It is a place of eternal thirst. The rich man prayed to, to, to uh, Jesus in Luke chapter uh, 16, verse 24, that Lazarus would be allowed to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. I'm not trying to uh, make anyone frightened, but I do want you to understand hell is a serious topic. It is a place of horror. There will be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Hell is called the second death. You know, the first death you, you die and you come back from, uh, only to serve wherever you're going to serve in the second death. All right? For those of us who have not been born again. Because when we die, 
we will be resurrected never to die again. Yes, sir. But for the unsaved, there will be a second death. Yeah. And that's going to be hell. It is the place of darkness. In hell, the sun never shines. In hell, the grass never grows. In hell, the flowers never blossom. Because it is a place of total outer darkness. It is a place of sorrow. In hell, there will be no children laughing. In hell, there will there will no, be no, no one smiling. Nobody singing. Everybody is going to be shut up in the depths of despair. It is a place of regret. In hell, there will be an undying memory of a poorly lived life. You will always, for eternity, remember missed opportunities to be saved. Hopefully, I'm getting somebody's attention. It is a place of separation. Matthew 25, verse 41 says, Then he will say, Depart from me. You who are cursed, you know, our whole spirit person, our whole soul yearns to be back with God. So eternal separation is punishment all by itself. So, so we need to learn how to beat the heat because hell is real and it is a place of pain. Then I need to say a word about the people of hell. Those who reject Jesus will be there. John 3 and 36. I believe that's why the devil got mad with me last night. Because I was I was giving, revealing and, and exposing information about his plans for you and I. All right. G, John chapter 3 verse 36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life for God's wrath remains on them. Reject him if you want to. And his wrath remains on you. The greatest sin that a man com can commit is to reject God's only begotten son. So it is a place for those who reject. But the reprobate will be there. Somebody asked the question, what is a reprobate? A reprobate is a person who the Lord has rejected because of their unyielding and unrepentant love of sin. Y'all know anybody like that? No, they're wrong, but they love them. Won't repent, won't even try to get it right. Revelation 21 and 8 says this, but the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominables, the, the, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Keep on lying if you want to. Keep on fornicating if you want to. Keep on being a murderer or a sorcerer or an idolater and you will burn in the lake of fire. All of the reprobate men and women of the world throughout all of time will have their place in hell. So, so it's a place for those that reject. Y'all going to get this after a while. It is a place for the reprobate, those who love sin and won't do nothing about their problem. But it is also a place for the religious. All the religious people say amen. <laughs> you know what you're saying, did you? <laughs> Hell will be filled with people who have baptismal certificates All right. but have never been born again. Mm. It'll be filled with people who have their names on the church roll yes. but have never established a relationship with Christ. Jesus will say to them, I never knew you. But Lord, I've been, I've, I was at New Calvary. Uh, I ain't never knew you. Uh, I sang on the choir. I never knew you. You don't get to know him on the choir or working on the ministry. You get to know him by establishing a relationship. 
You got to talk to him. Talk to him. You got to hang out with him for a little while. Reach out. And he'll say, oh, I know you. I heard from you. You was always begging, but I still heard from you. <laughs> Knowing you deserve to go to hell. I've met people like that. You live knowing you deserve to go to hell. But it's another thing entirely to end, in, end up in hell when you thought you were a Christian on your way to hell. Don't let the devil fool you. It's time for a checkup. Pastors, preachers, deacons, church leaders, first ladies. Everybody needs to every now and then check up and make sure you're saved. Amen. Don't never be so smug about your salvation that you take it for granted. No, I want to be sure because I'm not trying to go down there. I'm not trying to do that. So it's check up time. So the people of hell, y'all know who they are. They're the ones who reject. Jesus Christ. They're the reprobates. They, they love the sin and don't want to do anything about it. And those are the religious people, but they're unsaved. I need to close. Y'all can't take too much more of this. Uh, I want to close with a word about the preventions of hell. What are the preventions? Y'all been waiting for this, this point all along. Come on, preacher. We know all that bad stuff. What, how we get this thing straight? There are three important steps that you need to take in order to beat the heat. First, you beat the heat when you turn from your sin. That's a hard one right there. Because that sin keeps you. We, we, we used to hang out. Where you been? Come on. Just one more time. Ain't no harm. Just one more time. Then you can start that church stuff. You got to turn from your sin. I hope I'm helping somebody. It is not God who sends a person to hell. It is unrepented sin. You know, I've got some members in this church. You know what they do? They join church once or twice a year. I love those members. You know why? Because they're trying to get it right. Amen. Amen. They're not taking no chances. They know they don't measure up. They know they have no business living the way they live. And here they come, trying to get it right one more time. That's a good member. I don't care what they tithe. I don't care where they work. They're good members because they want to be right with God. They want to turn from their sin. Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So you need to figure out this thing called repentance. The rich man, he knew why he was in hell. He lived a sumptuous life. They say he was dressed in purple, the sign of royalty. But he knew he was in hell because he would not repent. Secondly, you beat the heat when you trust in your Savior. Did you hear me say your Savior? He has to be your, not mama's Savior. Not the pastor's Savior. It's got to be your Savior. Once you turn from your sin, then you must turn to Jesus Christ and turn in saving faith. You gotta believe. But the third step of prevention is to turn to God in repentance. Acts chapter 20, verse 21. The apostle Paul says this, he said, both the Jews, now they were God's chosen people. He said both the Jews and the Greeks, that includes us. We're not Greek, but that includes us. Both the Jews and the Greeks must turn to God in repentance and have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So everybody must trust. Don't you let these people tell you that there are all kinds of different ways to get to heaven. Run from them people. 
They don't know what they're talking about, and they're trying to mess you up. There is one way. There is one person, and his name is Jesus the Christ. And except you accept him, unless you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, you're lost for an eternity. So we beat in the heat this morning. We're going to beat it when by turning from our sin. We're going to beat it by trusting in our Savior. And we're going to beat the heat by turning to God in repentance and in faith. I'm finished with the sermon. Somebody say it. Amen. 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 Y'all better get down some praise. Hallelujah. Y'all still got a preacher that wants to preach about the yeah. hard stuff. Yeah. I don't mind making you mad. I don't mind making you uncomfortable. Because it's necessary that we all know why we are here. We're here to be saved ourselves. And we're here to point others. Who you been pointing? To the Lord. Who have you been encouraging to do better? And you know how you do it? You do it by telling them your story. You think you got a problem? Let me tell you what I came through. Let me tell you how many times I had to go back and get it right. Uh, some of y'all talk about how I try I got saved and then tried to go back to my favorite bar. Oh, y'all wasn't here for that. It didn't work. But it is an example that there's something in the human frame that wants to go back to the darkness where we came from. And God will not allow us to stay there. You deserve to live a sin-free life. You deserve to live a life above where you've been living. Amen. It's called being saved. Not perfect. Did y'all hear me? But saved. On your way to perfection. And perfection awaits us in glory. I'm glad about that. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. Father, Thank you for your grace. Somehow, Lord, you saw fit to, to pull us from where we were. To go down and lift us up out of the life we were living. And to save us from our sins. You gave us grace enough for us to repent. And try to do right. Try to live right. Try to talk right. Sometimes stumbling and failing, but getting back up and starting all over again. That's the journey of a child of God. But we're saved. That's the most important part. And I pray today that no one leaves here or no one under the sound of my voice would leave this message without a clear understanding of their salvation. Help us to stay saved and in your presence by the way we live and the way we walk. We'll give your name praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name. In the saving name of Jesus the Christ. Let us all say amen. 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 And thank God. someone here if, you're, if you don't know for sure whether or not you say this is the day that you make sure step out from where you're standing walk down the aisle send me a comment on Facebook give me a contact number I'll talk to you about salvation. It's too important to leave here the same way you came. Let me see the hands of everybody here that's saved. You know you saved. Can't nobody talk you out of being saved? 
I won't have to come get you out the mosque or the, the witness hall. You're all right. Come on, let's praise God for a safe house. COVID-19 vaccines and testing are happening. Online registration, there's a link here. Every Wednesday um, from July 21st, that's passed, but all the way up until August 19th, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the St. Paul UAME Church, 3114 North Market Street. You can still get your vaccine or you can still get tested. Questions, call Mrs. Butler, 302-764-4500. Three zero two seven six four forty five hundred. Don't be foolish. Take advantage of people trying to help you stay healthy. You don't know everything. Don't risk your health and the health of your family and others by assuming you know what you're talking about. On the other hand, that means you have to trust Karma. Pray about your decision and do what the Lord leads you to do with regard to your vaccine, with regard to your testing. It's too important. And again, there's a new variant on the upswing. Thank God for all of you being here. Thank God for our praise team. Y'all give the praise team a hand, praise. Amen for those who did the setting up of the tent, our musicians, our deacons, our deaconesses, and where will we see you next Sunday morning? In the sanctuary. Don't come late. Don't come late. Come ready to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Let us all look to the Lord. Be encouraged, be blessed, be saved. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with thee, thy people, henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. God bless you.